Hey everyone, this is Austin Schur here with We Write About Music, and today I'm speaking with Emperor Steve. He has released an extremely innovative and immersive audio gallery of music on his website. This is basically unlike anything that we've talked about before, so I'm really excited to have him on today. Uh, thank you so much for taking the time out of your day. How are you doing? Thank you very much, Austin. I'm doing great today. I am so happy to hear that. Um, normally, I would try to explain this myself, but legitimately, this is like nothing that I've seen or talked about or can actually grasp. So I'm going to leave it to you right now. I'm going to open up the floor for you to basically explain what this is and what people can expect uh, before they really dive in. Thank you. Yes. So uh, in 2021, I released an audio gallery entitled Era. It's 27 songs, which I've released every Friday starting, I think, January or July 7th, all the way through December 31st. I still have one song to go. Nice. Uh, and it is an audio gallery as, comp as compared to an album because the songs are designed to be experienced discreetly, like by themselves. Right. Um, they are not necessarily... Uh, related works. I mean, obviously, if you like one, you might like another, but it's not, the ideas are independent. They're all contained within the song. You don't have to listen to the whole album to get what it is that's trying to happen. Um, also, uh, they are designed to be listened to in any order, um, you know, because they cross so many genres from like upbeat dance to like lo-fi, uh, chill hop or whatever. Right. Um, you know, it's really, uh, it, it's enough music for people to be able to customize it to their own listening and leave out what they're not really feeling that day. You know, people's moods change a lot. So do mine. That's why my music yeah. changes a lot. And so I want to make sure that people have, like, that people can experience it in their own way. So the thing that this is, uh, this has never been reported before. This is uh, an exclusive right here. Oh, yeah. Um, Era is actually uh, comprised of, 28 27 octillion albums and that is because each album is a one of one in that particular order there are 27 songs which means there are 27 octillion above septillion above septillion <laughs> above sextillion octillion uh permutations of this album so track one goes first and then there's you know track two track three or there's another one of one album that is track one, track three, track two, track four. And they, and they I see go what you're out. saying. I see what you're saying. Okay. So there are actually 27 octillion permutations of this album. I'm going to be burning them and releasing them that way. If you, if you get a physical copy of this album, it will be unique. There will not be another one like it in the world. That's amazing. Uh, you've kind of blown my mind. I'm not like blown smoke at you or anything, but that's actually ridiculous. In in just like the era of music nowadays, where we're at the point where, it can, I mean, album experiences are certainly a thing. There are artists all over the world that Absolutely. release an album that it's like, yeah, you know, this was meant to listen from front to back, and I and I tailored it that way to evoke certain mm -hmm. emotions and and blah blah blah. This, on the other hand, is actually thinking outside the box. And it's not just, here's my single, I'll see you next month, keep up. This is actually, like, this is the way to keep up a fan base. This is a way to, like, start something and have people talk about you. Well, there's, there's a lot about that. Uh, one, one of the main reasons that I'm doing it like this is I've been making electronic music as Emperor Steve since I was 16. Um, th that would be... 2002 2003 and uh when i was in high school making this music i would burn cds of my music for my friends sure and those would all be different and so the way that i could encourage more engagement amongst those people my high school friends mm -hmm. was that each cd was different and that they would trade them so that you know okay, okay. I, I would i would make one that was like for relaxing you know and then i'd make one that was for driving and then like those two people would see and they'd be like i've never heard that song let's trade cds I love so that. it's it's a it's a way of creating a unique experience and as far as like um album like start to finish things go i really appreciate artists that do that yeah. um you know when when it's like a 
when it's an overarching story or it's like a, a, a really dense message. But um, I think that a lot of my songs and music are centered around concepts and like mm-hmm. ideas and philosophies. And I want it to be an exchange. I want, I want, my music can be where a thought begins, not where it ends. I want people to be able to hear it and think, okay, what is panspermia? It's the theory that an asteroid crashed into earth and that's why life exists, you know? And so like you, you listen to this and you think about, you know, there's a ton of writing, but um, you listen to those things and it's, it's designed to my whole, my whole shtick is instrumental music to inspire creative thought. I, I want to encourage people to pursue their own creativity. I'm, my music's great. That's wonderful, creative, great. What I want to do is I want to demystify the artistic process so that more people create more art. That's my goal. Sounds like a very solid goal, in my opinion. It actually makes people stop what they're doing and think. Don't get me wrong. I love I love music with lyrics, but there's something very special about instrumental music that it I I personally feel like it slows me down a little bit and it challenges me to listen as opposed to just like you know using the voice as another instrument or something like that you can always make connections within the lyricism but yeah you've really got something special on your hands uh sort of my follow-up to this is so there are 27 songs on this record Mm -hmm. are you continuously adding to this listening experience? Like as you put out more music, are you going to add in certain sections to the audio gallery? I haven't decided okay. because I, ha- I haven't crossed the, uh, I haven't, I, I'll have to decide by January 7th, whether I'm going to include uh, a okay. 28th song or not. Um, the way that this worked was uh, last year, uh, in January, I had a, a, a semester break. Okay. And I sat down and I tried to write a song a day. Um, in some case, in some days I wrote two or three. Damn. And, um, and so I, I, I took that, I shelved it. I didn't listen to it, look at it for three months. Um, I came back, I picked through it. I decided that out of all the songs that I had created during that time, I liked 27, 27 enough of them were, were, were coherent enough that, <laughs> they, that they could stand alone for three and a half minutes. I could leave them alone at a party and they wouldn't break anything. There you go. Um, so I, I had 27 and I realized that I wanted to do like weekly engagement kind of thing. And so I... Uh, looked at the calendar and I rolled back 27 Fridays from the end and started in July. I, d- I decided all of this in May. I, you know, amazing, dude. What I, so this year, I, uh, I began this year by releasing my anthology, Steve's Empire, okay. which is uh, six CDs, albums of uh, music that I've written throughout my entire life, you know, that, that, you know, start some of the music I wrote, some of it's 20 years old. It came out this year, but I wrote it 20 years ago. Um, And, you know, I'm an artist. I've had uh, interesting opinions about my own art for a long time. And uh, I really, I decided that if I was going to take myself seriously, I had to start at the beginning and take it all seriously. So all of this music uh, got a proper release on Spotify and YouTube and that, and, and built a website for it. Sure. And so that's Steve's empire. That's all the stuff that I made between ages 16 and say 26. Okay. So I, I actually hadn't written music for 10 years. I hadn't written Emperor Steve for 10 years. I was doing other music with the Browns brothers and all different kinds of stuff. Sure. Sure. But um, so I, Steve's empire is that anthology and that came out this year as well um i forget where i was going with this it's okay if you have forgotten i have more questions because this yeah is... we'll just we'll just leave it off you, okay you can fill in the blank from a technical aspect do you have any background in like website design or did you have any even outside help putting together this gallery because it's quite immersive as i mentioned and there's a lot going on and i wouldn't even know where to begin to get something like this going i i have created a hundred percent of the content that that you see there uh the art 
the virtual galleries, like the 3D, the 3D environments, sure. all of the writing, all of the websites, uh, the tax forms. I, I do everything. I, I do all the Instagram. I do all the social media. I sure. do all the replies and comments. It's all me. And, uh, you know, it, it's about the max of my time, but I enjoy it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, I don't I don't think I could do two me's, but I, I got this one down pretty good. It's ridiculous. And are you the type of artist that's always working on the next thing? I, and I say that in the sense that I know that this has taken you so much time. I can't even imagine like the hours that you've clocked on this thing specifically. What I mean in my question is like towards the future, towards 2022, like January 7th is going to come and pass and more music is going to want to come. So how do yeah. you work? Well, um, I am always working on the next thing. And I sure. think that th this is this has kind of been my central thing as far as why 2021 has been so big for me mm -hmm. is because people, artists love creating and they, yeah. some artists don't like the process of putting it out there. Right. And I was one of those. I, I had a lot of music for a very long time that never saw the light of day. And I basically just snapped and uh, I had to put it out. And so my goal is that I because I'm still ahead, you know, I still have songs in, in the queue, like yeah. stuff for stuff for next year. I haven't I haven't finished it. You know, like the song that comes out on Friday, I haven't finished yet. Like I typically I you typically work under do. Pressure. I typically do mixes on Monday and Tuesday nights and I upload it and Spotify, I, I just squeak the Spotify approval uh, time frame. Nice. Um, but my goal is to put out things. I, I want to take everything out from underneath me and do my, my creative energy as a high wire act where it's, if it came out today, I probably did it yesterday. Like that's what I'm trying to get that. to. And, you know, it's because, because I believe that all art is a reflection of the world around us. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm reflecting my world back to you. And uh, I think that the closer I can do it to the point of inspiration, the more relevant it becomes. You know, if I do a song about... Uh, you know, whatever happened yesterday, and I wait two years to put it out, it still means something. People remember it, you know, they're like, oh yeah, that thing. But when you can, when you can respond in real time, it, it becomes a part of the conversation. It becomes a deepening aspect wow. where like, you know, oh, I hadn't thought about it that way while it's still relevant, you know? That's and... just the way the world works at this point. Everything is so extremely reactive. The news cycle is hourly, it feels like. So why shouldn't music be? I understand, you know, for example, like take a mainstream artist and they got to stick to the album cycle because the, the record label says that they have to have the album out by this time, but some of the ideas and some of what they're talking about, like you said, is outdated. This gives you the opportunity to truly reflect on what is happening in the world and, you know, kind of give back through music in a way. Yeah, not just not just react, but respond. Yes. And, you know, in, in a way, like, for myself, I get to strengthen my own, like, grip on my reality and, you know, yeah like i know everybody's like really convinced that everything's real and that we're all like actual people and that everything's like in this reality but i'm here to tell you it's <sighs> not that simple <laughs> there's a lot more going on that we are equipped to understand yeah and so handle it anyway <laughs> so it's 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 a it's a matter of you know when you're involved you can confirm your existence. Sure. When something happens, you respond to it, and then somebody responds to you. You can be sure that all three things happen. Yes. So, it, I mean, it, it, it's not to be taken for granted. People, right. uh, people, you know, people take this existence thing a little too easily. <laughs> I agree. You know, maybe it's it's better that they don't think too much into it. But uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure about that. I I, I kind yeah. of hope people. Uh, get a grip on it a little bit better because 
when we when we come down to the reality that this is the reality that we have, mm -hmm. maybe we uh, take a little better care of it. I hope so, but so that it would be ideal. We've yeah, we've learned that you know plenty of people out there just don't really care about much. So <laughs> yeah, it's complicated. But they wouldn't tell you that. They they would say that they care about a lot. True, I think it's just a lot of ignorance, but. Yeah, you're probably right. That type of person wouldn't outright say it. So yeah, depends. Oh, well, that's why we need artists to help us, you know, kind of extrapolate that's what our they own say. thoughts. Yeah, that's what they say. Um, I do want to talk about the actual music itself. As you mentioned, when we first started going is there are like an influent or I'm sorry, an infinite amount of genre influences. Every song is slightly different than the last. However, it's still got that certain cohesiveness coming from you, which is like, you know, the tale of a true artist, which I really enjoy. I want to talk a little bit about your influences, your inspirations. I know you've been making music for a while now, but is there anything specifically that influenced these, uh, this set of songs? This set of songs? Uh, given this particular set of songs, no. Uh, mm -hmm. like, and, and I know this sounds crazy, but like, given the pandemic, I have completely shut myself off from taking in pop culture. I like, I don't have the stomach or the patience to like, like, I can't take jokes and I can't I, like, and I get my news from trusted sources. So I don't sure. need that. Um, I, I don't have the patience to listen to, I mean, I love pop music, but like, I, 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 I don't have the energy for it right now. Like get, okay. with the world being what it is, like I, I literally, yeah, mostly, mostly don't listen to music. And I know that sounds weird. And, it's not but, weird. <clears throat> I hear that um, answer a lot, actually. A lot of people that I speak to specifically don't listen to music, not because of that they don't enjoy it, but that they don't want it to influence what they're making. Because if they listen to something too much, it will maybe have influence on what they're making, and then it sounds too much like the same thing. Yeah. Um, and uh, I, I, you know, I just, I really, I use FL Studio, um, okay. uh, the program that I use to uh, create all this music. Sure. I have, that, that's what I've used the entire time. But I really enjoy it from a visual aspect. Like, it's a very visual program. Like, you can... Um, there was a section of time in my early, early career where I would tr see how much of a song I could write without listening to it. Okay. And, because, because that's how visual of a software this is. But, um, you know, I would be creating these things and I found out later that I was actually revisiting like my earliest influences. Like, uh, I, my earliest electronic music influences are Nintendo games. Mega Man 2, Double wow. Dragon 2. That, that like sure. That that's before before there was, you know, and I mean we're talking 1989. Uh Mega Man 2, yeah. Um and then later after that DDR. Yeah. I I played a lot of DDR. I don't know <laughs> if if you were a high schooler in the early 2000s, you probably played some DDR too. Oh, yeah, I've lost, uh, uh, not lost, I've invested plenty of money into a DDR machine before. <laughs> so, oh yeah. Yeah. But, um, so it, you know, and then, and then I look at c certain things. One of, uh, one of my earliest influences, uh, DJ Shadow, like mm -hmm. introducing, yep. uh, I still, classic. and the private press, like just, just super classic. And of course everybody knows it. And it's like this fantastic thing, but like, you know, it was, um, I had a pretty sparse CD collection. You know? Yeah, I mean, back uh, then, there wasn't anything like that. Yeah. You had and the fact that we a... still talk about these albums today means that they've had an impact. Yeah, he just had a 25, I think it was a 25, 30 year anniversary. Yeah. Something like that. Um, but um, I found that I was, because I had like starved myself of current music, um, what I what I was using when I would go back was like my, really my earliest influences. I mean, from the from the very first song, Andrea's theme, which is like when you hear it, you're like, is this chip tune? It's not chip tune, but mm -hmm. you you think you think like, okay, this is you automatically get it. It's video games right. somewhere in there. Um, 
of course then it goes orchestral so go figure but sure. um i suppose it's worthy of note that uh my my parents are musicians my mom is a violinist and has played in many orchestras and symphonies and my dad awesome. is a drummer so uh that 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 probably makes a lot of sense in the context of my music is that my mom's a violinist and my dad's a drummer so that means you're that probably explains, raised on the good stuff that that explains why my music's like that sure um but it, it really felt like i was giving myself an opportunity to revisit you know the music that i really love at a young age before i knew before i had taste you know like taste sure. yeah, yeah, it, yeah it was it was the music that like really like got me and uh you know I, like I, I think everybody uh chances are if you're watching this interview you you have your own apex twin story about like the first time you hear come to daddy or <laughs> right bucephalus bouncing ball and you're like wait can he do that is that yeah that's music right he can do that right and, no and we're all just like we're all like wait you're allowed to do that like it, you know it, it, it's that it's that first encounter with like a major rule breaker where you're like sure. oh oh so we can just really make noise <laughs> sure doesn't all have to be the same thing it shouldn't be it shouldn't it, be you're right exactly that's what separates the good from the great so yeah um yeah it definitely um circles a lot of the a lot of those early influences i mean moby had a great year sure uh that that play album yep. um atb uh discovery came out in 2003 which like it's it feels like that's like sure that is uh, like just ingrained in all of us now but believe it or not there was a time before daft punk what <laughs> people will refuse to believe that but it is I, true. it's you can't i mean I how do you separate yourself from harder better faster stronger i don't yeah. i don't know i don't know Still everywhere i feel yeah uh, I do want to know throughout this entire process, throughout like you even thinking to do something outside of the box like this to actually, you know, coming close to being finished with it, has there been something throughout the entire ride that surprised you the most? Um, it, the thing that surprises me about these things is is that they it's like if you take all these songs and you subtract them from themselves mm -hmm. what's left is me <laughs> it's uh I, th that's not particularly surprising but um it's just like I'm I'm amused by the diversity of the body of work. Sure. It you know you know uh, I I mean I've written I, I think including era I have cracked twenty hours of recorded music. Um, Steve's Empire was seventy three songs. That was the anthology that I released earlier but that was less than half of my catalog. Right. And so I've always tried to believe that there are some repeats in there, you know, songs that sound like other songs. So I've always tried to uh, seek something new, like, a, yeah. you know, just a little brand new piece of dirt that hasn't been found on the map. And it's surprising that that has been possible to, to, <laughs> To the most extent. I mean, you um, gotta be proud of yourself, man. Like it's I you am you took the hard route and it's paying I, off to get some amazing. I I appreciate that. Um, you know, it's not for me to decide and I am uh, varying degrees of proud based on people's reactions. I, I I I am a sensitive artist after all. Yeah. But uh but you know, um the thing that I I just really poured myself into it and I'm impressed by the result. Yeah. Like I, I recognize that 
I kind of think of myself as a third party in this situation sometimes. Okay. And so it's just kind of like you, you blank out and then, and then a month later, there's 30 songs waiting for you. And you're like, I don't remember doing that at all. Just kind of <laughs> blacked out, woke up and had a, yeah. A and, for me. Yeah. And, and I mean, I, I try to demystify this process. Like on sure. my website, I, I have like screenshots of my sessions yeah. and, and like, all that stuff because i really do want people to like you know i i know that it's not going to be most people but i definitely assume that at least a few people are going to see that and be like what that's all that is okay i'm doing it um and i just uh i think i think you i think as an artist you have to commit to your process yeah and that like when you start thinking like oh that's too much or oh it's too loud or that's too many instruments or that's not enough or like you can't just do that with a kick and a hi hat or like like whenever whenever you try to talk yourself out of your own process everybody loses Mm -hmm. and like you know i think too many people have have the like the commercialization stuff installed where it's all like well, these lyrics don't relate to a quarter of the pl- a quarter of the planet, so we got to change them and make it about how tonight is going to be the night. You got and, music for you. And yeah, and I really, I I leaned into my process without knowing what it was. Nice. And uh, I anticipate that's how I will continue to do things. I love it because that. because ultimately I make music for me to listen to. <laughs> like. It, <laughs> You're the one spending all the time on it. You have to enjoy it at the end of the day. So I'm, I'm definitely listen. I've definitely listened to it more than anybody else. <laughs> uh, that is without a doubt. Um, I have one more question for you at this point. Basically, what I want to know is for the person that is going to discover you from this, and for the person that is going to listen and kind of experience this whole thing for the first time, what is a message that you would like to say to them? You are a unique creative force in the world and we're waiting. I love it. That it? Um, if you're listening to this music for the first time, uh, keep a pen and paper handy. Write, draw. Um, it, it can and will make you think of things that you didn't expect. Um, one of the... As a creative person, you have to value the smallest ideas and keep track of them. I've actually recently learned this is that um, the the creation of the idea and the execution of the idea are two separate things. Sometimes they happen at the same time, but not very, not very often. So I hope that when you listen to this, it gives you ideas for things to draw or things to write uh, and that you write those things down and that you keep them with you and that when you have the energy to be creative, that you take one of those ideas out of the box and run with it. Um, it, it. I really believe that given the current state of the world, we need more creative people doing creative things, not just making art, but creating ideas, creating new ways to relate to other people because this world needs creative solutions and needs creative thought and it needs uh it needs the value of uh of existence it, it, we need people to appreciate the value of existence not just our own but the the existence of things ar- and people around us and i hope that my music will lead that idea or conversation to somewhere that you can make it your own that it's not my idea that it's your idea I love it. That was a fantastic answer. And this has been an absolute pleasure to get to talk to you and like pick your brain about this project. Um, Obviously we're going to have everything listed for people to click and explore and just like subscribe everywhere, subscribe, click, listen, follow, send it to your friends, all that that good stuff. Um, But seriously, thank you so much for your time. This has been awesome. Thank you, Austin. I, I really, can't, really I can't wait you. to finish out the rest of this project. Prometheus comes out on Friday. 
Hell yeah. Thank you so much again. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thank you. You too. Take care. Bye-bye.